Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a rather unique camera built for the conference room, certified for Microsoft Teams. This is a 4K PTZ camera with dual eyes. We're gonna take a look at what that configuration actually looks like and how it functions. This is the UVC86 from Yaling. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the UVC86, taking a look at what all comes in the box, getting a close up and personal look at the device itself, going over its features and capabilities. We'll take a look at managing the device and customizing its settings. And then of course, we'll do a demo of a couple of the different modes available using the UVC86. And we will use the device as our camera to record through it so you get a sense of the quality capabilities that the UVC86 actually has. Let's dig in. Okay, so crack the lid on the top of the box. Kind of like a Pandora's box here, opens in several different ways. We've got our protective styrofoam right up top. In this little slot right here, we've got our remote control. We'll go over all the functionality that it's got in a little bit. Over to the right side of the box, we've got a separate smaller box. Right up top, we've got the quick start guide, two and a half meter USB cable, seven and a half meter network cable, power supply brick, power cord, included hardware, our batteries for the remote control, and some Velcro strips. With the first layer of styrofoam removed, we get our first look at the UVC86 PTZ camera itself. We've got some of the mounting hardware in here as well. There are several different mounting options. We'll cover those shortly. And with all the other components out of the box, we can easily lift out the UVC86, set it on our surface here. We've got a lot of protective pieces of plastic covering these uh, flat surfaces. We can pull those off. With this piece right here, we're gonna gently slide this cover over. As you can see, it covers up that secondary camera. We'll pull this piece of plastic back off. And we can bring that back over. We'll notice that between the camera and its arm, we've got a little bit of styrofoam in there. So we'll just pull that on out. Coming up for the bird's eye view of our package contents, we've got the mounting hardware all over here to the far right. Then we've got the UVC86 sitting right here in the center with the remote control. Over to the left, we've got network cable, USB cable with cable weights, our power supply and power cord, quick start guide, and the included batteries for our remote control and the cable straps. Our optional mounting gear includes this larger metal piece. This can be positioned in a few different ways, all depending on how you're going to mount the UVC86. This is adjustable, so if you want to mount the UVC86 on top of a display, the camera would sit up top here, the dis this lip would go on the front of the display, and then the back end here can slide forward uh, based on these little screws up top that allow us to adjust the distance. So depending on display size, we'll adjust that to be a different width. For a wall mount, we would mount this back panel to the wall using the included hardware We've got some anchors and bolts in here. And then the UV86 would again sit right up top here. Finally, we've got the ceiling mount option. To do that, we would flip this upside down, mount it to the ceiling, and then our metal bracket that we were looking at earlier would attach to the back side, and the UVC86 would sit in the cradle that is now suspended from the ceiling. Finally, the UVC86 can simply sit on a surface at the front of the room. And that's what we're gonna do with it in this video. Taking a look at the VCR20, which is our remote control, we've got a number of buttons here that we can use for managing our UVC86. Right up top, we've got the tracking mode key. By doing a long press, the tracking mode key switches among the auto framing, speaker tracking, or off modes. We've then got a mute button on the upper left. We've got our, our directional pad for panning and tilting the camera in the direction we need it to. The scroll bar zooms in when you go up, zooms out when you go down. You've got one, two, three preset keys right there, and then you've got volume up or down at the bottom. The UVC86 is billed as a 4K dual eye tracking camera. There are multiple modes that we can track using this camera, and we'll cover some of those in a little bit. Among them, there is the group framing, speaker tracking, and presenter tracking. To accomplish this tracking, we've got a 4K 
90 degree field of view mechanical PTZ camera right up top. And down below, we've got our 4K digital zoom 120 degree field of view camera. There are physical privacy features built right in up front. We've got this little slide that will cover up the bottom camera. Obviously, when the PTZ camera is at rest, it is pointing downward, so you're not able to see out of it. But the device does also come with this rubber lens cover to protect it as well as provide additional privacy. The UVC86 can be used with the MVC systems as it is newly certified from Microsoft Teams. It can also be used with other video conferencing systems from Yealink or as a separate USB device attached to a computer. Looking at the camera from the underside, we've got the rubber grips on the bottom in case we intend on setting it directly on a surface at the front of room. We've also got the slot here for that standard tripod mount. And then right up here, we have this gear meant for manually adjusting our digital camera up front. Depending on how you mount the UVC-86, if it's ceiling mounted, the camera is going to need to point downward. To accomplish that, we simply move the gear up or down, and it will adjust the camera. A wall mount will be different than a table mount, which will be different from that ceiling mount. Once you've manually adjusted the camera for the position you want to put it in, you will use the Yealink Room Connect software to calibrate the lens. Coming around to the back, you can see we've got that universal security slot right there for like a Kensington lock or other types of devices. We've also got a v VCH port here, which Ethernet cables would plug into. The documentation calls this out as being where the uh, audio devices would plug into in an MVC system. You've got your DC port right there for power, our PC USB connection right in the middle, HDMI out, which is not utilized in a MVC system, our line in port, and finally a inset reset button right there on the far right. For our video, we are not showcasing the UVC-86 as part of a wider system. We are simply showcasing it as its own camera. So we will be connecting it directly to our PC via the USB port. We get our USB cable. This end will go into the uh, UVC-86 itself. The other end, which is USB-A, will go into our PC. Put that right in there. We don't need to worry about an audio device because again, we're not showcasing an MVC system. So now we need power. We'll take this power cable and plug it into this part of our power brick right here. And then of course we take the far end of the power brick and we will connect that into the power slot that we have right beside our USB port. And now we're ready to plug this into the PC and then plug the power in and fire it up. Okay, we've actually got the Yealink USB Connect software up on our PC. We have the USB cable from the UVC-86 plugged into the PC, not yet plugged into power. So let's go ahead and power it on and take a look at what we can manage from within the software. We see that the UVC-86 has power. There's a little there's a little LED lit up on the left-hand side. It's doing a little bit of a wake-up routine as the arm swings around, the camera lifts up, swivels around, gets ready for action. And we can see over on the PC that the uh, USB Connect software has detected the UVC-86. Uh, we can see that we are connected via USB. We've got our serial number and the firmware version up there. With the camera seeming to be done with its routine, we'll go ahead and click that little arrow. Uh, so we've got a few things on our dashboard here. Firmware version, hardware version, connection method, equipment model. We can add a remark if we want to. Um, that's our device status. Now going into the device settings, that wakes the camera back up. We get a view of the room. We can use our PTZ controls over here to zoom on in. I'm going to bring the camera over to me. Got a little bit of darkness because of the uh, light back there, but we'll zoom on in. And we can get pretty, I mean, it's getting really close. I'm over here and that, that's some serious zoom happening on that upper mechanical PTZ camera. 
So we'll zoom out a little bit. That's that's a little better. And, uh, and then of course we can reset it to bring it back to its place. Now we can create new presets over here if we want to set up presets for the camera. And then we could take a look at the auto tracking. A few different things before we get to that. Noise shielding. This can be turned on or off. It's on by default. Uh, we've got the inverted upside down mode. So if we are going to be mounting it uh, to the ceiling or mounting it in an upside down way, we'll want to toggle that on. The camera pan direction. Detect the number of faces in the room. Uh, we'll go ahead and say yes. Now that means that it will read faces, right? It's looking for actual faces, not silhouettes. That's using faces as its means of people counting. So if we do that and we swing this back over my direction and I look over at the camera, now it's a little dark behind me, but we should see that it will count that I'm a person in the room. There we go. We see it's got one person counted in the room. So that's the peak of people tracking. It needs to have detect the number of faces toggled on. Camera needs to be pointing at the individuals in the room. And then it can tell based on faces how many there are present in the room. Lens correction. We'll click over here on that. Do we want to confirm to continue calibration? So I mentioned when we did the manual gear at the bottom that after adjusting it to the right setting, we would want to do calibration in the software. So we're going to say, okay, it says during lens calibration, we'll want to wait a moment while it does its thing. And the lens has been calibrated successfully. Now, auto tracking is something that we definitely want to leverage. That's one of the big AI draws to the UV86 is that it's got three separate modes. If we take a look at those modes, there's auto framing, which is your traditional group framing, right? You've got a conference room, you got a number of people in that room, and the camera wants to find the optimal uh, angle and zoom and crop and all that to make sure you're capturing that audience. As people come and go, you want to adjust that. That's what auto framing is. It's, it's that group framing. Speaker tracking is when you've got people in the room actually speaking and that 120 degree field of view camera at the bottom detects those people speaking, then it will pay attention to them. If that person stops speaking and someone else in the room starts speaking, then that person will be framed in on. So it, it keeps an eye on who is actually the active speaker in the room rather than the entire group being framed in. A little hard for me to demo that since I'm not in a conference room full of people, but that's what speaker tracking is. Finally, they've got presenter tracking, which they've just got tracking mode is what they're calling it inside the, uh, the interface here. If we select tracking mode, then we've got tracking settings. So, and a couple more things in here. We can adjust our timeout for tracking and we can adjust the sensitivity for tracking. So you play around with the actual tracking settings before you decide whether or not you want that to be adjusted at all. If we go into our tracking settings, you have to select the area on the camera that you want to be paying attention to in terms of where the speaker should be. Uh, if you don't see the, the area on your priority tracking zone, then you click the tracking image dimension and you will just slide the camera over to the appropriate place in the room. We've got it just covering me, but now we're going to cover where I'm at and more space in the room. We'll say save here. I don't want to zoom in or out. If this camera was way at the back of a large auditorium, you might zoom in a bit. But we save, we see save successful, we go back over to priority tracking zone. And I'm gonna say, hey, this whole big area right here, that's our priority tracking zone. Pay attention to me moving around and talking in that zone. We'll say save, we see that it's successful. And now we're going to hit the expand button to see a larger image on screen of the priority tracking, or of the, uh, the speaker tracking. So you see me here, I am talking. It has paid attention to where the speaker is. I'm gonna stand up as the speaker and the responsiveness is pretty quick. It doesn't have a big delay. As I get up and walk around the room, the, the speaker tracking feature wants to keep an eye of where that speaker is as they walk across the stage, as they pace back and forth. Maybe they're demoing something, maybe they're getting closer or further away. 
The idea is that it pays attention to where that speaker is at all times, finds the optimal view of them, zooms in or out as need be, and tracks them as they walk across the room. Pretty responsive. I wouldn't say that I need to adjust the sensitivity levels at all. I think we're right on point there. Now for our recording demo in a little bit where we're actually using the camera to record our video, I'm gonna change this back to auto framing. Just a quick note there. When you do that, your tracking speed field cha changes to middle, slow, fast. So if we want changes in the number of people in the room or the way people are arranged in the room to be detected faster, we would just select fast or slow for slower. On the image settings section, this is again the area where I feel like I would get myself into trouble with the image quality if I tried to adjust any of these settings. But take note, we've got the exposure mode, flicker, white balance mode, display mode, saturation, sharpness, 2D noise reduction level. I'm not going to mess with any of that, but you could make adjustments to these settings if you needed to. Update device. So right now we can see that the current version is what we have. We are up to date, so I don't actually need to go through a firmware update here. And finally, we've got device support. So you can get log file collections, you can upload log files. We've got a video diagnose section as well as an audio diagnose section, and then a feedback section, and finally our device recovery. So we can either reboot the device or put it back to its factory settings if we need to. And that is managing and configuring our UVC 86 in the Yealink software. Now, we're going to use Camtasia to do a little demo of what a recording looks like using the UVC 86. I just want to demo that under our camera for the recording tool, we're going to select Yealink UVC 86. That brings it to life. Our camera is positioned over to the left, and we're now going to hit record. So right now we have selected the UVC 86 as our camera. We are recording in 4K. So the quality of the video should be in 4K that's coming through. We put our tracking mode back to the auto tracking or the auto framing, which is like your group framing. I don't have a group in here, but if I move over to the side, we're going to see the UVC 86 after a little bit of time, come back over and frame into me. Remember, we can make that faster by selecting fast or slower by selecting slow. We left it at medium right in the middle, so it's just gonna track us at a middle pace. I'll walk back over here again, and after a couple seconds, the camera will look back over at me and frame it. There we go. This is a recording in 4K using the auto tracking mode of the UVC 86. So there you have it. That is the 4K dual eye tracking UVC86 from Yealink, newly certified from Microsoft Teams. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, please share it all over your social media accounts, throw a like on this video down below, and if you're not already subscribed, there is a little subscribe button in the bottom right corner. Go ahead and hit that, and then turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on the next time I come out with a super helpful and very informative video like this one. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope we'll see you back here for the next device overview video.